that Allah has made me such a creature, a creature that is able to understand and reflect with the beautiful creation that he's put me under. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Let's recite another salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you. Is it okay? So the essence that we're talking about is to acknowledge this wonderful gift. Once we understand this, we begin to realize that I'm under this wonderful, mysterious creation that gives me so much pleasure just to look at and experience. So where am I going? Why am I here? We all know that we are under trial. How do we know that? As I mentioned in my previous presentations, there is nothing you and I do outside the world of trials. My standing here and speaking to you is a trial. Me speaking to you is a trial. You listening to me is a trial. There is nothing that is outside the fold of a trial. You are examining me. You're going to see what am I saying that makes sense? What am I saying that doesn't make sense? What is it that you can say about me that you can find a mistake in me? What is it that you can say about me that you can say, aha, that made sense? Under trial. My relationship with you, between yourselves, when we shake hands with someone, that's a trial. I'm examining you, who are you? Do you stand up to my scrutiny? Are you my type? Do, does your feather match mine? Can I decide that you're going to join my circle or am I going to be outside your circle? Am I going to make a business transaction with you? What words did you use? Were you careful when you used those words? Did you take me into consideration? Did you understand my ideals? Were you considering me when you said that? Constant trial. There is nothing outside the existence of the human being that can escape a trial. So we know that within our very microstructure to the very macrostructure, mankind is constantly under trial. And thus we know that in the very smallest of scales I am under trial, therefore wisdom dictates, then what is this grand collection of trials taking me to? And there is a grand trial. And that is why Allah says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He has created death and life to test which of you is best indeed. أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Meaning the humankind in the generic sense of the word is to do good. That's why Allah says, subhanAllah, look at how the Quran speaks. I'll speak more about it inshallah in time. Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. You are the best among the people. Ta'amuruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. You enjoin the good and you forbid the evil. Wa tu'minuna billah. And you believe in Allah. For it is a natural propensity when a human being looks at himself, he is left with no choice but to humble himself. But once he sees himself in the grand sphere of this great creation, he realizes he needs to gravitate towards the good. But what is good? I spoke about good and evil the other day. It's a relative relationship. There is absolute good, then there is also relative good. Relative good is connected to the absolute good. It's where it derives its goodness from. Good by the simplest definition from the Islamic perspective or from any universal perspective one can understand is that which the Creator wants you to do. Meaning if Allah tells you, you must do this, it's good. If Allah says, I recommend that you do that, it's good. If Allah says to us, don't do that, then it's not good. I forbid you to do that, it's not good. And not good comes under the domain of evil. That's the simplest definition one can give of good versus evil. But for us to understand good versus evil, we need to know many things around us. Some people have been wondering in some of my presentations, I use Christians as examples. I use Hindus as examples. Some people have been wondering, how come this brother talks about Hindus so much? 
Is it because he's originally from India and Pakistan? <laughs> well, I don't come from India and Pakistan, so that's not the reason. Because Hinduism today is the most prominent polytheistic religion in the world that has the largest population of people. Therefore, it's practical to use them as an example. Why do I use Christians? To bash them? No, I respect them. They're good people. It's not because of that. It's the ideology that's under discussion. For at that core level, if we don't understand, we will not understand what is our faith telling us. If I were to say to you, oh, my Muslim brethren, obey your prophet. قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِلْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, through our Holy Prophet in the Quran, they tell these people, if they love Allah, then let them follow you. I'd say, okay, I'm a Muslim, I'm supposed to follow you, but why? Why is it so important for me to follow you? If you and I do not understand the ramifications of those who have violated that injunction, for those who have moved away from this prescription which Allah has placed upon all of mankind, and to see what happens as a result of those who have not followed, and therefore to compare ourselves with other faiths and religions, we will never understand the validity of our own faith. Thus to have comparative religions is by the prescription of our Holy Prophet himself. He says, it is important for you to gain knowledge, even if you have to go to China. Well, Okana is seen. Go, go and study, understand, reflect, read the different books, read the scriptures. I spent almost a year and a half among Christians in Bible study. I used to go to the Church of Christ Bible study. I used to study with them. Every Wednesday and Friday, we used to go for Bible study in the university. Because those born-again Christians, you know, they come knocking at your doors. And they keep telling you, you're going to go to hell. So I said, come and join us. I said, okay, let's figure this out. <laughs> you know, save myself from hell. I said, you've been so kind, you came to my door. I, I guess I have to reciprocate now. <laughs> so these people really thought I was going to become a Christian. And rightfully so. They see this guy here coming every Wednesday and Friday, sitting with us, you know, listening to the Bible. He's definitely going to come with us. But I posed some very basic questions. I said, I'm willing to accept this, but you're not answering my questions. Every time I ask a question, a valid question, I pose it from the Bible, I'm taken astray. I don't understand. Do you want me to believe in this or don't? And at the end of the day, the common denominator says, have faith and just follow. And I said, I can't do that. I'm sorry. You have to take my faculty of mind and throw it in the trash can. Then tell me. But then you can't tell me because I won't understand. Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Muhammad. So I 